Given a binary tree, return the pre-ordered traversal of its node's values. How can you do that? That's today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going through a little problem 144, binary tree pre-order traversal. Suppose we're given this tree, 1, 2, 3, the output is 1, 2, 3, pre-order. So first, we'll have to understand what is the pre-order, what is the order. So it's going by this way. The pre-order traversal of a binary tree, we follow this, these three steps, 1, 2, 3. Number one is that we visit the given node itself. And then next, next, for a binary tree, you always have two sides, left and right. So we, then we visit left side. That's the second step. The third step is that we visit the right side of the tree. Suppose we're given this binary tree. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is exactly the same tree that we went through yesterday for the in-order traversal. So we'll go through this and using the pre-order traversal and see what's the final output. So what we're going to do here is that we'll follow this order. Node left, right, NLR. For this order, for every single node, then we'll do this. Node left, right, node left, right, node left, right, node left, right, for every single node. Now let's begin. First, we have the node, which is the root node. We're given access only to the, uh, only to the root node. So we put one into the final list. Okay, then we go left. Left is two, that's the node. Okay, we'll put two into the list. And then we go the, the left of, two, which is four. Then we put four into the list. Then we'll attempt to access the left side of four, which, it, which is now. So we'll just skip. And then we'll go to the right side of four. It is seven. We put seven. Seven is the node. Then we'll go to the left of seven, which is eight. We'll put eight into the list. And then we'll attempt to access the left side of eight, which is now. We don't do anything. The same thing we'll do. We'll try to access the right side of eight, which is now. Then we don't do anything. Then we go back to this um, this seven node, and then we try to access the right side of seven, which is this node nine. Then we add nine. Well, again, attempt to access left and right of nine, which again is now. So we're going to we're not going to add anything into the list. And then we're back into this, the right side of two, which is now. We cannot do anything. Then we'll be here. We try to access the right side of one which is this node, 3. Then we'll add 3 into the list. Then left side of 3, which is 5. We add 5 as the node, as the node value into the list, and then we'll attempt to access left, which is now, then right, which is also now. So we don't add anything into the list. And then we come back here, try to access the right side of 3, which is 6, this one. And then we'll add 6 into the final list and then we'll attempt to access left and right again left doesn't have anything right doesn't have anything okay now we finished this is the entire list this is the final output with that we should return just a quick recap what we did is we always follow the three steps a node left and right visit node first visit left second and visit right the last so now let's quickly put this logic into the actual code we can uh, write the code in the in the recursive fashion, which is very super straightforward. Let's see. Just uh, have a helper function called DFS, which is DFS uh, depth first search array list. Next is, well, implement the helper function, which is integer DFS tree node root and then list list. So first, the base case and also the corner case, which is if root equals now, then we're just going to return list, right? Which is this case. So left and right, either one of them is now. So we'll just return list in that case. Otherwise, what we'll do is that we'll first add the current node that we're iterating on into the list, which is root.val. So remember in the very beginning, in the very beginning, we are given access to the root node, so we add a root node before we traverse to the left. So node first and then left and then right. So we'll do that. So we'll add the root value into the list. And then next next step, what we'll do is that we'll do DFS root dot left. We'll traverse the right side and then we'll traverse the right side. DFS root right list. This is, these three lines are the three steps that we went through, right? 
root first, visit the current node, and then visit left side, and then visit right side. This is the entire recursion. That's it. Now let's hit submit and see. All right, accepted. So the time complexity of this program is going to be on. n is the number of nodes in this given binary tree because n we will have to traverse through every single node. Space complexity is going to be on as well. That's the worst case. The worst case, again, like a very skewed tree. It's basically a linked list to put in the tree binary tree fashion. Every single node only has a left side child and doesn't have any right side child or a single node which only has right side child. It doesn't have any left side child. So basically a singly linked list to put in the binary tree fashion. That's the extreme case, which is going to use on a space complexity. But in the average case, it's going to be O log n. Log n is the height of the tree, which in, for example, in this case, sort of balanced tree. So the space complexity is going to be O log n. In big O notation, we always talk about the worst case. So both time and space complexity is going to be O n. n is the number of nodes. I hope this video helps people to better understand how this entire flow really works. If that's the case, just do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell notification. Right now we're going through tree series. After this, we'll go through dynamic programming and then sorting and searching to help people better prepare for their upcoming coding interviews. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.